So let's get started. Um, just want to introduce myself. My name is Andrea Hardy, and I am the Director of Customer Success here at Top Software. And joining me today is Terry Perez, one of my favorite people, who is our VP of Business Development. So on today's agenda, um, we're going to be talking about the changing landscape of association management um, and really go into why companies are moving towards web services to help grow their business. And then additionally, we're going to be talking about like the hidden cost and exposure that, you know, as a business owner, you should be aware of, um, you know, especially when having an on-premise uh, solution. And then we're going to really dive into kind of what the, the ROI is and how you calculate it um, based on, you know, what your costs are uh, as far as having an on-prem solution versus moving that to a web solution. And then lastly, we're going to touch base on giving you some, some information and strategies that a lot of our clients that have really seen a massive growth in the last few years have used and, and what they've done to really grow their business. All right, let me get over here. So uh, I know many of you are feeling the effects of COVID and you have a lot of homeowners staying at home and they have nothing better to do, but just, you know, reach out to your team. But aside from that, you know, let's go through how technology is really shaping the industry moving forward. So, you know, this is a pretty, you know, powerful slide in that, I'm sure you've all noticed the delta between, you know, what's being expected of you uh, in relation to what your, your management fees are. And with these new expectations, it's really not feasible, you know, to get what, what you need to actually, you know, provide these services. So we're going to walk through kind of how you can offload some of this with technology, um, you know, to really, you know, drive and power your company moving forward. And, uh, you know, I jumped the gun. Did we do the, the first two polls? Can you throw those up, Sandra? Awesome. So I don't want to bother you guys, but if you can take just a second and answer the polls that we're throwing up, um, just so we have a little more information about who's joining us today and uh, whether you're a management company or a self-managed community. All right, we'll go ahead and get going then. So I think this is an important topic to cover. Um, you know, think about this, that with advances in technology, we're really embarking on what is coined as the age of the customer. Um, if you're a lot like me, you remember, you know, times when you wanted to watch a movie, you would just go to Blockbuster and rent one. Or if you needed something, you just went to the local store and bought it. But, you know, we're living in a different age and now you've got in, instant access you know, to online videos. You've got the ability to order anything off of Amazon and have it delivered same day, two days. So you know that expectation and that on-demand access that people are getting from, from all the other things that they're interacting with is gonna affect what they're gonna expect from you. So that's kind of where you know, I wanna start this conversation and then we'll go through kind of how that's gonna play out um, not only now, but in, in the next few years. Hey, Andrea, and just to kind of piggyback on that, you know, when you talk about the age of the customer, this is, a, this is an era where no matter what size your organization is, so speaking to those management companies and those customers that are on listening today that are managing those two communities, or you just starting up and you're managing 100 doors, no matter how large you are, you're going to be your service levels and the way that you speak and engage with your customers is going to be compared to a company like Netflix. Um, for you to for you to have an excuse, well, I, I can't service my customers that good because I'm not that big. Guess who doesn't want to hear that? The customers, right? They're not going to accept that excuse, and so that's why it's really important to lean in on these points. No, that's a great point, Terry. Yeah, and I think that you know, with the with the industry as it is now, um, all these expectations are really putting pressure on on companies. So let's kind of dive into you know what that means for you. So as we know, technology is continuously evolving. So if you think that like, oh, I'm going to get the newest thing and I'm going to be good. No. What do they say? You know, nothing changes but the change. So what does this mean for you and these higher expectations? Um, for better or worse, 
your clients have more power over you than they ever have. Um, so, you know, their expectation of quick answers and access to information. And I think one of the driving problems that, that we're all going to experience is that social media platforms are now being used like megaphones where customers are talking about their experience in a public and far reaching way. So would you agree with this, Terry? Andrea, I couldn't agree more. Um, the, the, lar the larger management companies that I talk to across the United States and even some of the mid-sized management companies are starting to actually care about Yelp reviews and Google reviews. It's a funny story. Um, if you look up almost any management company in the United States, you're going to see some really happy homeowners. Um, and so we know that not everything every homeowner says is true. However, uh, when, when you're looking at, when you're having your boards out there and they're looking for that next, that management company, they're looking at these reviews. How you respond to every single review and how you treat every single, single homeowner is how you're going to be judged in the service level that you provide on. So I could not agree more with you on that point, Andrew. Yeah, and you made me think of a point. And I remember back when I was running my management company, one of my boards, and it should have been a, you know, trying to, to give me a little pat on the back, but they said, you know, you're the best of the worst. And I'm like, well, that sums up, you know, association management. <laughs> I should be happy about that. <laughs> right. So let's look at, you know, what does this trend mean for you? Um, you know, as a business owner, you now have to manage your profit margins and find ways to provide new levels of service without substantially increasing your fees. Um, so we're going to go and talk later about really about ROI um, and one of my biggest things that I talk about is like additional staff you know a warm body doesn't make you more productive um, so look at the level of service that you're providing while preventing employee burnout and we you know we've all like started to see that businesses can't scale with you know adding employees only um, you know it's really clear that in today's environment that you have to look into ways to create a digital experience for residents to offload that workflow on you. Yeah, Andrea, I would uh, I would wonder how many people today are still not in their offices. How many how many of our customers that are on today, and how many people are, are that are here with us joined on this webinar that are still disconnected from their office? Um, and so you, you think about that. How how do you how do you grow and how do you bring on new talent at the same time? And that's a really good question to ask. No, you're right, Terry, and, and it's been an internal struggle even, you know, for me, bringing on new people, like trying to remotely train people is, it's a struggle. Um, you know, you have to come up with new and creative ways to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is a, a, a statistic that Terry uh, sent to me, and, and I was kind of shocked. Like, think about this, like, there's going to be a shift to smartphone access you know, and how's this going to change the technology needs? If everybody is accessing information, you know, mostly on their cell phone, you know, how are you going to get ahead of this? Are you going to be prepared when this becomes the norm? Um, you know, digital access is so critical in this day and age. And and I was always a, a believer in being, you know, the first to, to adopt a new technology. And, you know, it really did benefit growing a company from 10 to 54 communities um, over time and you know being a smaller company a lot of the competitors were like wait a minute who is this company how are they getting the business from us this makes no sense but I was really really adamant about bringing on as much technology as I could and this was you know 15 years ago and of course technology's evolved so much now where I'm like oh it would have been so much easier if we would have had all this back then but at the time you know that was cutting edge and so that really drives home the difference and in being and continually evolving with the technology. Um, so before we kind of, you know, really dive into anything, this, this has been a, a real eye opener for me. Um, so for those of you who are convinced that, you know, holding and, and keeping your data internally, that, you know, it's safe, um, we're gonna talk through the hidden costs and the risks. Uh, you know, the massive exposure that we've seen with our own clients uh, on managing their own in-house server. So we're going to really talk about, like, the client experiences that we've dealt with, especially Terry on um, his side. You know, he's been involved with the clients so hands-on and, 
you know, when he gets a call at, at one in the morning because, you know, somebody's having a massive breakdown, you know, whether it's a virus, whether it's ransomware, all these things we're going to cover today. So let's yeah, kind of... That, that's no lie, Andrea. They do call me at one o'clock. I think some of them that are on this phone call or this webinar right now have called me at all hours of the night. So I'm not going to name any names, but they're there for sure. Um, it, it's nice. It's nice to get those phone calls when, uh, especially when we can when we can jump in and help them. Though it's it's always it's always good to to have that relationship with your customers. That is, and I think that's kind of what sets us apart, and especially you, Terry. Even when I was a client, uh, I had my direct line to you, and you know. I remember. I remember that. I remember. All right, so we're gonna throw up a poll, and I laugh at when I look at this. So, how many of you can relate to this picture? So truthfully, you know, I'm sure everyone can at some, you know, degree. Um, I remember having an in-house server and all the challenges that came with it. Andrea, you know that you know that that picture that you just showed was not in a management company's office because in that server room there would be stacks of AP invoices and, and old reports and deposit reports and all that good stuff too. So we definitely know that that's not a that's not a management company. I know. And it's funny because originally when I was thinking of this webinar, I wanted to call it the monster within. <laughs> so that's what I remember. All right. So let's drill into the true cost when you're really evaluating your return on investment of, you know, whether it's more beneficial to keep your in-house in uh, server or whether you should be outsourcing. So when you think about it, and I didn't even realize there's so many additional costs that I never factored in. So we're going to touch base on many of these and walk through what you really need to know to get a true picture um, of, of what you're spending. So uh, one of the things that I, I was shocked to learn is that, you know, the technology has changed so much from when I had a server and now the average lifespan of a server is like three to three and a half years. Um, and they start to lose effectiveness after three, meaning it's gonna be slower, meaning you're gonna have more issues, more exposure. Uh, and I didn't realize this until our IT person overheard us talking about our presentation. He's like, throw in warranties. He's like, if you don't have that, you know, you're gonna be in big trouble. Uh, so I'll let you, you know, talk through this, Terry. I know this is kind of one of your passions to- uh, Yeah, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's really, really something to, to lean in on when you're if you're out there and you're still using the, the some legacy technology where you install on a server and you install on a workstation um, there's as, as well as anybody knows there's a lot of upkeep with that right there's a there's a ton of upkeep and so if you look at the list here that we have um, these are direct things that you have to manage right now that you have to take ownership on and so when we talk about what life looks like beyond a, the solution that you're using right now these are yeah. things that you want to outsource these are things that you don't want ownership on. Um, if you think about what, what we're going to talk about here a little bit later in, in the presentation, some of the risks that are involved with maintaining your own server and whatnot. So um, if you look at this, the, the upkeep, just the upkeep alone, um, the hours that you spend with contracting the IT time just to keep the server running, just to make sure that, that things are running slow, that, that are not running slowly. So there are a lot of reasons, there are a lot of reasons listed here, and I'm sure that everybody can, can, can relate to these pains as well. Yeah, and I, I was shocked. I never thought to, to factor in the cost to run electricity to a server. And, you know, with, with running your entire business on, on a platform, you know, I used to wonder why, why does it take so much of my server to run tops? Well, you know, we used it to its full capacity and that was one of the problems. And so who knows what we, we lost in efficiency and productivity over, you know, trying yeah. to, to watch the, what do I say, you know, pinch the pennies and, and lose the dollars. Yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a, go ahead. It's also interesting, Andrea, like a lot of the management companies, when, when they're using this, the older technology, one of the things that the sharing that the uh, the server does as well, it, ser it serves as a location where they can share documents that are pertinent to each community. So you manage, I think at your peak, did you guys manage around 200 communities or 220? No, we were we were about 60 communities with about 18,000 doors. Okay. All right. So, okay, got it. So 60 communities, I like to think big, my bad. Um, the, uh, when, you, when you think about that though, they, they, they have these repositories on these servers so that they can share those documents, right? And so if yeah. you think about you, Andrea, you're really nitpicky about wasting time in small tasks. 
So if you think about having to go back and forth between your, your management software and your accounting software and your network shares, these are all things that also eat time. Yeah, and productivity is probably one of the biggest unknown expenses that people don't qualify. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one, of the, one of the biggest things that, that we'll talk about is, is backups. Yep. Ah, you're, you're right there. I was switching over, but this is, this is a passion of mine because, you know, I thought I knew it all. I thought I was doing great. I hired a great IT company and I, it was my third one, actually. I realized <laughs> that, that they're, you know, uh, a golden unicorn for sure. Um, but one of the things I ran into is just thinking, okay, I'm covered. I pay for this service, you know, and I was paying about 2,500 a month between IT and backups. And you can imagine like how frustrating it must be when you know we're trying to purchase some data from tops pro because i needed to make room because i was being too cheap and <laughs> didn't want to add space to my server so i had someone purging old data out of it well i don't know what happened something happened we lost a hundred account ledgers just gone and i thought oh we're, we're covered so i called my it company well unfortunately there was a glitch in their system that they didn't catch so I literally had a panic attack and thought to myself, what are we going to do? And, you know, I was fortunate enough to know that I, uh, you know, uploaded those through a sync to a, a website company. So I cut the sync off as fast as possible and saved that history, but printing out a hundred of those and re-entering it all. Imagine the time, you know, and, and the energy that was wasted. And so that it was right then that I was like, I can't do this anymore. You know, this is too much to try and manage on top of what we're trying to do. Yeah. I was equated to, you know, if, if I'm a doctor, the last thing I want to do, you know, is manage the, the inventory or something like that in a hospital. I, I need to let the other people that know how to do that handle it. Um, so we're going to throw up a poll real quick. And, you know, I think this is going to be an eye opener to find out how many of you have tested your backup solution, you know, within the last month or six months or like me, never. <laughs> Andrea, I think I remember that when that happened. Like, I know that you haven't been a client in probably what seven or eight years or so, but I, yeah. I, I bet you that I remember your IT guy's name. It's coming to me right now. His name was Kofi. Yes. Or something like that. I, yeah, I remember this. I remember this like it was yesterday, actually. Yeah, we were in a panic. I mean, and that's when you realize that, you know, I was exposed, and, and that probably was catastrophic, but it wasn't enough. You know, it didn't like cause my business to to suffer for it. And then I think, you know, I'm grateful for that, but I'm glad that I learned on that smaller piece. Yeah. You know, Andrea, what's 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 crazy about data backups and, and backups, for those people today that are here that are using Tops Professional, I guarantee you know what backups are. And I guarantee that you've had to, to restore from a backup, whether it be on a community level, because like Andrea said, something happened to a ledger, or maybe, maybe you posted a lockbox file. And, and the lockbox file had an incorrect date or, or something happened to where you had to go back to your backups. Imagine if that, if, that, if that catastrophe happens and you don't have the backup to go to, right? Yeah. So, go ahead. Good point, you know, like we were talking about, um, who was the company that we were discussing? Uh, Gar Garmin, huge company. I mean, yeah. you would think they have their stuff all together. They had, some issues come up where, you know, they had to restore from a backup and had challenges. You would think a, a huge company could easily, you know, access a backup, but it happens to, you know, everyone, no matter what size you are. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a, like this question here that, that you have on the slide, you know, would your, how would your, your boards and your homeowners knew, what would they feel if they knew how you, how you stored that data? Um, you know, it, it's it's their data, it, it's it's their information, and so uh, if you want to be that best partner to them, and you want to make sure every management company says that their service and their care for their customers sets them apart. One of the things that you can do to to make sure that that's true is that you invest in a solution that's gonna that's gonna solve this problem. Uh, the top, the people that have used Top Professional have usually used it for five, 10, 15, 20 years they don't realize or they don't know that there's what life is like outside of that. So when we talk about backups with, with for say our newer platform, backups are usually a concern when we discuss that, but it's, you're, you're not gonna have the same need for backups when you move to that newer solution. You're not gonna have these, well, I'm gonna lose a ledger or I can, I can lose a file or we have to restore something. These things just go away simply. 
and think about the fact that you know with these you know enterprise companies that this is what they do for you know their business so a data center hosting solution that you know puts different copies you know in different areas of the united states i mean they really do have their stuff together and and that's that's where you want to be you want to know like i am secure i'm not worried about my my data one i'm not going to have any issues being web based but two if anything ever happens there are copies you know that are safe that are you know stored in data centers by companies that are hugely reputable and that's what they do for their business all right i'm going to move on to oh these are the fun ones um so in the next few slides we're going to talk about like all the exposure that you may not know you have um and then you know looking at that that studies show that the security breaches are mainly taking place on internally hosted on-premise servers um you know that is something to think about like these you know people out there that are trying to like do things like virus attacks just for fun or ransomware to try and extort money you know they're going after you know these smaller businesses or mid-sized businesses because they know that you know that they're probably not you know putting all of their information into one of those data centers or one of those companies that does have the protection built in. And so I'm going to let you take over. <laughs> yeah, so we, we talk we talk a little bit about the risks for kind of storing that information. And I, you know, I'm, I'm just going to speak to, to legacy technology in general. And legacy technology in general doesn't usually use a, a nice cutting edge leading technology SQL driven database. Usually there's some type of flat files or older style files that, that, that contain that information. And so when you have that out there sitting on a server, it's, it's basically just sitting there waiting for somebody to, to tamper with it. And so a few of the risks that have been, that have been something that, that in the last probably, I'd say three or four years, they've increased uh, drastically. So I've been at Tops for 11 years. Within the, within the last three or four years, we've watched ransomware cases specifically for targeting uh, management companies. Uh, increase exponentially and so just a, just a few a kind of a few stories here and Andrew's not kidding like I've had phone calls like on a Friday somebody in panic because the screen that you're looking at right now this is what they woke up to so imagine you're you're, you're trying to take a, a cash receipt from a homeowner or you're trying to do something you want to look up a balance for a homeowner and this is what you get instead um, the the last couple of companies that that I dealt with where they had the ransomware one of the things that the ransomware does is it specifically goes and looks for backups. It's not just going to look for backups that you've made, but it's going to look at shadow copies on servers. It's going to look at every type of thing that it can jump to, to, to touch, to, to make sure that you cannot recover your data. Um, and so it can be very, very painful. And, and not only is it not only is it painful, but it's hard to get rid of. It's hard to get rid of, and these things can they can come back and they can return. A few of the management companies that that I've helped. Um, that we've helped as a company get through this. Um, I would say probably about four companies, and they the the door count that they represent is about a hundred thousand doors. A hundred thousand doors were affected, and and all it takes is is one click, one wrong click, and and that's and that's how it starts. And so um, we we say all this because it's real, because these these are things that happen throughout the country. These are things that that cause panic. And so if you can get in front of that, what would you do to get in front of that, right? What can you do? It's not like you can put a fence up around your server and that's going to help, right? Or, or a guy with a gun. Um, it, it's, it's time for, for those that are on the call to move forward away from the legacy technology. Your homeowners and your boards deserve better. And I, uh, Terry, I was shocked when you told me the story about how one company had to pay ransomware $150,000 to recover their data. And then in looking at research online, it's not a guarantee. You know, it, it shocked me that there's companies that that offer insurance for ransomware. Like it's become that prevalent that you know other spinoffs of companies trying to make money off of this. Uh, it, it just blew my mind. Yeah, it's 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 a trip. I mean, and and you know, you're again, if you don't have backups and you have nothing, you have you're, you're held. You're literally held hostage. That's why it's called ransomware. You're literally held hostage because you need those ledgers. 
You need that payment history. You need that GL history. You need to you need to be able to prove that you can't that, you, that this homeowner called in 52 times about something that that really wasn't important. You know, you need all all of these things that you stored in your software. So um, it's extremely real. It's something that um, you can you can think that you're as prepared as you want for it, but you're not solving the problem putting infrastructure in and IT people and throwing more resources at it, the problem still exists that you're using legacy technology, right? And until you solve that root problem, you haven't done the, the, the best for your clients is, is basically what I, what I like, the, the way that I like to look at it. Yeah, and you know, thinking back just a few, a few weeks ago, we had a, a client lose their data and, and we're, we're having to rush to onboard them. And I mean, it's really put them in a, in a hard spot. So, you know, when we think about like, oh, well, you know, I'm good, everything's good, I don't want to change, you know, things work well, it, it, it literally can turn your world upside down, you know, overnight. Yeah. Do you think we beat that horse, Dad? <laughs> well, it's one that's very important here. I mean, yeah. these are things that I would have never thought of, you know, yeah. and I didn't even know that I had exposure to. And that was back in the day. I mean, when I was still like, you know, like entering people's payment information directly into to tops and sending a file over the internet thinking, you know, what's the harm in that? Yeah. You know, these are all things that with the changes in, in technology, with the changes in how, you know, these, these piracy companies are working, we all have to really be a lot more um, cautious in the way that we're managing our clients data. And then we, you know, look at these, we've got natural disasters. These are things that, you know, I, you know, what happens if you're, you know, your building burns down or a flood happens or things like that. And I'll let you talk to that, Terry. I, I know you have a lot of, uh, you know. Yeah, particular. you know, I, I, you know I, I could talk about some of the things that have happened to some of our clients, like when there when there have been snowstorms and stuff up, up, you know, up north that have affected people. But I like to liken it into us, you know, uh, we're, a, we're a small business, just like all of our clients. Um, we just have a large touch in this industry, but at the end of the day, we're we're also a small business. We 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 I think it was four or five years ago that we had the hurricane, um, maybe five years ago, six something. I forget forget what it was. But we as a business, we had we had didn't have a a, a very solid business continuity plan. So when that hurricane hit, we were down away from our customers for for a good amount of time. And so, as Andrea explained, in the day and age of the customer. Silence to your customers is the worst thing that can happen. It's the it's the absolute worst thing that you can have happen. And so when you take a natural disaster like like that hurricane, that changed our business because that showed us that we it was time for us to get serious. We're living in Florida. We have to be prepared. So we did that. Got a solid business continuity plan. We replaced all of our legacy homegrown systems and invested all in web applications, web applications. Um, we, we went that route. And, and if you look at what happened with COVID. We fast forward now to COVID. When it was time for us to send everybody home to make sure that our people were safe, we did not skip a beat and we did not lose a day or an hour of communication with our customers. And so that testament is something that everybody that's on this call should be able to say that you're prepared for. On the day that catastrophe happens or whatever happens, that you're prepared to not let your service levels be degraded because of something that you can control now. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, and I, I, and when you bring up COVID, I, I'm, you know, it, it's disheartening to hear all the companies that were affected and they're, they're to the point where they're like, I, I'm just going to close my doors. I mean, it, it really hit them that hard because they couldn't go in the office and they didn't have a plan and without being able to really jump in and help their customers, they just threw in the towel. And, and these are the kinds of things that, you know, I've gotten so much feedback from, you know, our, our Tops One clients of, oh, I'm so glad I made that decision before all this happened, you know, because it would have really put, uh, you know, my business in jeopardy. So that's where, you know, these kinds of things where they were in the newest technology, they were able to be remote, they were able to just keep, you know, doing business and not skip a beat made a big difference. Yeah. And then the, the accidents and theft and sabotage, I mean, I've been on the phone with clients that said, hey, you know what, I'm on the phone, but I think I found the problem. My server is smoking right now. Um, and it's like, you know, it's, it's these things really happen. But the, the you know, the, the, the other situation and Andrea, I've, I've seen this happen time and time again. You have a, a management company that's that's a sizable management company even. 
Um, they'll have a property manager or a bookkeeper or somebody that's in love with one community and this community loves them. And so they have access to that file system. It's very easy for them to take that community and off with that customer. Right. And so when we talk about theft and we talk about things, it's not just the physical equipment, it's the data as well. It's the data, it's the data as well. And so we've seen that happen many times. Yeah. And and think about the fact that there's not as 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 strong of an audit report. Um, so you can't really pinpoint and go after that person for copying those files or, you know, like proving that they you know, were um, unprofessional in the way that they did it. So that and you think about employees that just you know may not know and they go in and they do something that's like uh oh I, I deleted that you know community and it's like wait what <laughs> let me go make sure I have a backup these are the kinds of things that as a business owner I would think that you know what letting somebody else worry about all these things and just focusing on your core you know business and how to grow it how to how to be you know uh, more productive how to get the most out of you know growing your business would be the main focus. Okay, this one is, and, and if you talk to anybody here, you will know for sure that, like, I am a fanatic about productivity. I will spend my days finding ways to do things faster, better, with less, you know, human error. So, you know, one of the things I want to talk about is back in 2007 when I wrote my case study, this was so, so, like, fascinating because I went to Las Vegas, I got to go to this really nice, uh, single family community and first thing I realized is like wait what you have 59 on-site employees seems a lot and then digging in a little more realizing that they spend almost 60 percent of their budget on employee costs but only eight percent towards their capital reserves and then it gets it gets even more interesting come to find out that was no accounting services they outsource accounting services for six grand a month and then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like what in the world are all these people doing? And so in looking at it, you know, okay, half of them are patrol people, but you know, what are the other half doing? How much time and energy does it take to run one association? Well, you know, in getting into the details, realizing that they had no systems, they had no software, there was no processes, and the amount of time and money that this association spent because they weren't utilizing technology and they weren't utilizing best practices was phenomenal. So I'm gonna throw up one more poll and ask you, you know, how many doors do you think this community was? So Sandra, can you throw that poll up for us? I'm gonna give everybody a second to answer so I don't give away the information. But, you know, I, I'm gonna tell you that, that it was an extreme shock to realize that this was only 1200 doors 1200 doors like crazy like think about the inefficiency and how much money they were spending so really thinking about like every small thing that somebody does that's manual it's not only a, you know costing you money for their time but it's also creating the you know the exposure to mistakes and that's where you know having technology and being able to to really utilize it to do a lot of the the day-to-day -day mundane tasks is going to pay off tenfold um, and we're going to go through some you know slides later that that really put into action how people have used this to grow their business so now we're going to go through um, kind of talk about what the, uh, the differences are in a web versus an on-premise solution and and i laugh when i say that because there are a lot of people, even people who sign up that we're onboarding today, that are not understanding what a web solution is. Um, they're like, what do I download? What do I do? And I'm, I always say, it's a lot like Facebook. You know, how do you log into Facebook? And they're like, I just get on my computer or my phone and, and log into it. I'm like, bingo, it's exact same thing. So you're not having to worry about downloading things. You're not having to worry about installing things or having to access something from another location. You know, everything is just like Facebook. That's the only thing I could think of that, that really everybody can drive home. Um, so let's talk about what we like to call outcomes versus ownership. And this is a new catchphrase. If you, if you Google it, it's gonna be everywhere because, you know, 
assess, model allows you to get outcomes, but without the hassle of owning and maintaining your assets. Um, so Terry, do you want to talk a little bit about like, you know, how other technology leaders are, are adapting to these changes? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the example that I always like to give, um, because Andrea, like, there are a lot of people out there that are very afraid of, of a web application. They're, they're afraid of, they're afraid of kind of going out there to, to the internet. Um, very, very, very fearful of that. So when I, when I talk about uh, this with, with management companies, I liken it into Microsoft. And if you look and you think about Microsoft, um, I'm sure that everybody that's on the, on the, uh, on the webinar today knows who Microsoft is. Maybe, um, they're kind of big a little bit. Um, they, they just happen to own basically, you know, some, some software that's pretty nice, but they had a, if you look at Outlook and you look at Word and you look at Excel and you look at PowerPoint, these were all locally installed applications, meaning that you had to install them, get a CD out, get an installer, install it on every single workstation, and then use the application that way. Well, that's just not feasible if you, if you want to be mobile. What we just showed in a few slides earlier, how by 2025, so many people are going to be using on their phone. These things had to, these things that Microsoft had as products, they had to be used on a phone as well or on yeah. a laptop or they had to be mobile. So what they did was they took their Outlook 365 and they moved their products to also web applications. And so now you can use PowerPoint, you can use Word, Outlook, all in web from anywhere. And so um, when we look at, when we look at people that are thought leaders with technology, we want to follow that same direction and we want to follow that same trend and that's why we decided on the web app a few years ago yeah you know and and the fact that you know you can be away from your office and and jump on any internet connection and you can get all of your documents you can you know share them you can edit them you know that makes a big difference access is so critical absolutely all right, now this is kind of a, a side by side on, you know, what the big differences are, um, you know, driving home the need that with a web application, you've got, you know, no hardware, no capital expenses, these huge amounts that you have to put up front um, to get servers and workstations and warranties and, you know, licensing and all the things that come with it, um, you know, that's going to be all included. So I always like to think of it like, uh, you know, instead of going out and buying a bunch of music, I can sign up for a small amount every month and, and have access to anything I want. So instead of going out and putting this big investment into buying all the, the songs that I like, I can just pay a monthly fee that's smaller, that's easily, you know, digestible and get whatever I need. Um, it, it's going to be the same correlation. Um, so again, like, you know, all the IT costs. I mean, the studies show that like 70 something percent of your IT costs go away without having to maintain, um, you know, your your main systems on an internal server. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot more to that, you know, being able to deploy it quicker, being able to scale is a huge one. Um, you know, having a, a web solution is gonna grow with you quickly. It's not going to require you to stop and get people in there and replace things, add more RAM and, and memory and things like that. Uh, and then I think the biggest, you know, game changer is being able to just jump on and access from any location. Uh, you think about the time savings that offers. Yeah, Andrea, the, also, you know, you think about um, one, of the, one of the nice things about having a web application is is not only the accessibility for for the employees to, to be able to access anywhere but guys think about everybody that's on the call today think about if you want to expand your coverage area you want to expand your coverage area and you want to easily be able to say you know what i want a property manager to cover this area or i want i want to now uh, service this this look this local area this is going to be this makes life much easier at doing that um i don't know about about everybody that's on the call today but again COVID has changed the world, right? We know that we know that this catastrophe, that that everything is going to be changed on the other side of this. And so your ability to be to be agile like this is it's going to help you in the long run retain those great talents. Uh, Andrea, I don't know if you, uh, if you remember when you were kind of on when you owned that management company, but it feels like when I when I talk to our customers, it's very hard to find a good property manager. It's oh, very hard to find somebody that cares. Yeah. I mean, and, and when you find good talent, you got to hold on to them because they're, like I said, the golden unicorn. Um, 
and then you know there's going to be things that we'll talk about like later in the presentation that that really drive home how you do that yeah so let's look at now you know really how the the web solutions do provide a faster return on investment so you know think about this that how much time do you and your, your employees spend you know trying to implement or manage or or just you know access all of these internal systems so again you know focusing on what your core business is and offloading this um, it's going to make your life a lot easier i mean hands down um, I, I haven't found one client who's like no I, I miss doing this or or you know it's something that that we want to bring back that's that's never the case so this was interesting um, i found this slide from netsuite um, and it really unpacks the cost allocation between an on-prem uh, and you know moving to a cloud solution and i didn't realize that you know they're showing that you can spend up to four times the cost to own and manage an on-prem solution uh, that that was eye-opening to me and, and if you don't believe me google it i promise you everything's available there <laughs> But just it really it factors in all the things that people don't consider. So, you know, we, we really talked about the hard cost associated with owning um, and maintaining an in-house, you know, server. Um, so let's look at really how to calculate the return on investment. And, you know, there's going to be tangible things, but then there's going to be things that are hard to, you know, like put a price on. But after we go through them, I think it's going to make a lot of sense. So. You know, being able to to run on any application on any you know device, whether you know you're on a cell phone, whether you're on an iPad, whether you're an Apple user, whether you're a, a PC user, um, these are all things that are really helpful to not have that roadblock. Uh, and then of course, I remember you know all of our workstations had to be updated, and sometimes files wouldn't update on one, and then it would cause it to have issues. So just making you know making life easier by never having to worry about does everyone have access to the same version. And then, you know, thinking about the support, you know, and the maintenance and the cost of the business um, is going to be dramatically less. And of course, you know, no installing things, no waiting for installation, no downtime, uh, you know, and being able to access that data that's secure in an offsite location. Uh, it, it just makes it's a game changer for a lot of our clients. And then yeah. one of my favorite is the no operating system issues with Microsoft updates. <laughs> I'll let you talk about that one, Terry. You know a lot about that. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 been brutal for us, Andrea. Um, you know, as Microsoft continues to evolve and release updates, we have to have uh, updates that are released for our legacy product as well to keep it to keep everything going going fine. So when you have a web application that's agnostic of of a device, it becomes much easier to to maintain. Um, and, and one of the points that's not here, but I, and I like to I just like to drive this point home. Um, because when we talk about productivity and when we talk about getting more, having a web application and, and having the ability now to tell your employees that they have the flexibility to, to work from home and do their jobs, even the bookkeeper, even, even the property manager, even the admin person or the customer service agent. Um, I, I look at what we did when we started to, to kind of allow people to work from home, very limited with a plan. Before I get into this, if you're going to allow work from home, you have to be able to measure productivity. You have to be able to measure how these how these people are are performing. Are they performing? Are they doing what they're supposed to do? But back to the story, when we started to allow this, we saw that this had a direct effect on the happiness and overall culture that that we have at Tops. And so, for example, if you so so say that you're you're one day and you you wake up on a Tuesday and you're really sick. Well, you know what? Financials are still going to be due on that day. Letters still have to be processed on that day. Homeowners are still going to call in on that day. And so do I take a sick day or do I come in sick and get everybody infected? Do I cough on everybody? What, these, are, these are things that, that allow you to, to have a better culture at work as well. When, what, what we know is if our employees and our people are happy, they're going to love our clients happier. They're going to be better to our clients. Um, and so that effect that it can have on culture and increase during during tough times like this it, it's it's really hard to to put a value on that yeah no you're right so i like this one so you know 
these are the things that I would have focused on that, that would really drive value uh, if I were still running a business. But, you know, one of the biggest things that, that I think that moving to a web application does is really streamline internal operations. Um, one of the biggest like challenges that a lot of clients have that, you know, have all these different systems is the continuity of information. And, you know, in, in this day and age, you know, the, the whole excuse of, well, we forgot to update that one. It, it doesn't fly. Um, but, but driving home, you know, really that employee efficiency and being able to do their job from anywhere. I always make a joke, you know, I could sit on the beach and do my job from you know, sitting there, like laying out in the sun. Um, but yeah, and then think about like, like reduced training time and costs and, and really retaining happier employees because you nailed it, Terry. That's what it's all about. Like when your employees are happy with, you know, their job and their stress level, they're gonna provide much better service to the end users and the homeowners that they're serving. Absolutely. And this is one that probably a lot of people don't think about, but you know, you probably don't consider like employee onboarding when you're calculating your return on investment for, for your current system. But you know, finding employees is difficult and typically you only do it when your team's already overwhelmed. And so they're like, oh, you know, now I gotta do my job and try to train this person. So, you know, without extensive training and oversight, you know, you end up with little or no gain, you know, to that employees productivity and we've all been there so it's one of those things that you know as a customer success uh, you know director I wanted to solve like how do we do this you know easier for our clients how do we make it you know easier for them to onboard new people so you know a little over two years ago I, I sat down with our product knowledge uh, manager and walked through and we spent two months weekends and all literally writing hundreds of articles putting them all in a really easy to understand like layout so that it matched the app and then you know now we're in a new project we're going to put in-app guidance so that when somebody logs in for the first time instead of being deer in the headlights they're they're greeted and they're like hey you want to take a tour let me show you around here's all your resources and you know all this new technology is so intuitive it knows what you know what page that employee is on and, and we can gather feedback like what their job description is so that we know what kind of targeted information they need to know. And these are the things that, you know, that are going to be game changers moving forward. And that, you know, I'm passionate about, you know, being a previous management company owner, you know, I want to help our people grow and succeed and make their life a little easier because I know it's difficult and I can't imagine trying to do it during COVID. Um, so, you know, that's one of our goals and thinking about like how to help you train and onboard new people without having to, to really put stress on your current team, you know, to, to take their time. And you know, I'm a big believer in warm bodies don't make things more productive. So you have to make sure, you know, that you're giving the people the tools they need to be successful. Okay, now we're gonna uh, go into the last section where we're gonna talk about, you know, the strategies that a lot of our management companies that we've seen be you know, really, really successful. Um, how did they grow their business? So, you know, one of the things that I, I realized is I went and pulled some reports and, and over the last 24 clients that we just renewed, 24 combined, they grew their door count by 36,000 doors. And these weren't enterprise clients. A lot of these were startup clients. Yeah. Uh, one of my, my favorite story is, this gentleman that I that I helped get in the app, and he went from 100 doors to 5,600. Like that amount of growth was unbelievable. And he's actually doing a case study for us now, so look for that when we publish it. But it really shows, and he'll tell you straight up. He's like, I could not have done this without yeah. you know, your application. He said it really, really like has been the core of my business. And then we had another company that has been a long-term client. Um, they had 15,000 doors and now they're up to over almost 37,000. And that's wow. in less than two years. I mean, yeah. that, those are numbers that don't lie. I mean, these people are finding ways to really drive business growth. And a lot of it's through productivity and anywhere access. And they're gonna tell you that. And this is where, you know, our goal is to get them to to talk about their experience and give case studies so that we can help other companies, you know, obtain these same results. 
Yeah. Andrea, when we, uh, you, we think about our friend over in Louisiana, uh, you know, um, and, and you, when we started with them in tops one, they were around uh, 30,000 doors. And I believe they're somewhere near 48 or 40 something uh, now. But one of the things specifically that I know that helped him um, and helped that business is, is was their ability to to kind of outsource and use the, the leverage the mailroom capabilities within within tops one imagine being able to process all of your collection letters all of your ccnr letters and everything that you do is correspondence to your customers being able yeah. to do it from the phone from anywhere so no more stuff in envelopes none of that um and and that dramatically changed his business and allowed him to grow and i bet he was so glad when when COVID hit because if you think about the fact that being able to outsource that easily he didn't miss a beat. No. Okay, well, yeah, let's talk next about some of the things they did that really helped them. Um, and I would say, like, instead of building and maintaining an infrastructure, they put all of their effort, you know, into, like, building their business. Um, you know, they saved on, on time and effort, it, which in the end really drove, you know, their massive growth. But one of the biggest things that I think that is a something that we need to touch on is the fact that you know having a web application gave them the ability to be very transparent with their owners with their boards and that's a big problem in the industry is you know if they don't have easy access to information then they're just going to assume that somebody's doing something wrong so if if you can say here you know I'm an open book you know you've got access anytime as we all know then they're like oh, okay you know I'm not going to pay attention now but I trust you just because of, of that level of service um, so you know focusing on like a digital strategy is you know a really big function too so it really drives client engagement communication um, between all parties between owners boards vendors uh, I, I like to think that the whole ecosystem you know is within one system and we'll go through kind of you know how consolidating these solutions, you know, prevents a lot of like manual error, a lot of, you know, disgruntled uh, owners and board members and, and kind of how they accomplish that. Oh, this is one of my favorites too. So I talk to people all the time and you may be one of those people who's like, yeah, this sounds great, but oh, now's just not a good time. Um, but while all transitions, you know, take time and, and energy, um, you know, consider this, doing nothing is the most expensive thing you'll ever do, or, or not do, I should say. Um, you know, failure to embrace change, and, you know, this could be like a major factor in lost productivity and lost employee efficiency and lost clientele, uh, you know, and, and really driving, you know, happy employees. So you don't want to lose your key people because they're stressed out, because they feel like they don't have enough, you know, bandwidth. Um, right. Yeah, and you know, think about the fact that 100,000 small businesses, you know, have closed their doors since COVID, not coming back. Um, so to stay afloat, you know, and succeed, really means you need to focus on a digital strategy uh, for online engagement. The only way to scale and and to make money in this business is going to be to outsource those phone calls to self-service. You got to provide all that information. You know, that's real time, that is a living thing to everyone that's in the community. You know, it's not going to drive everybody to it, but, you know, we've had customers that tell us 60% of the phone calls have gone away. You know, and in my mind, I'm like, yes, please sign me up. Like, the fact that that many people are self serving, I know I'm one of those. I don't want to talk to somebody. I want to get on the computer and look up my stuff and, and get what I need because I'm always in a hurry. So, you know, there's never going to be a great time. Um, but if you put it off and you wait till your hands forced, you know, how hard is it going to be to to catch up to the competition that's already done this? And then, you know, I always say you're going to look back six months from now and go, Whew, why didn't I do that earlier? Yeah. So it's something to think about. You know, we're all afraid and, and you know, I, I my degrees in psychology. So I know that like change is difficult. People like do not like change, but. It, you know, the only thing that's constant is there will be change and it's going to be in every part of our lives. So we either embrace it and just, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, take this leap or, you know, we we'll just become stagnant. So, you know, think about that when, when you're making these plans, when you're thinking about like where you want your business to go, 
because these are all things that have to be, you know, thought through, you know, at this level. And that's one of the reasons, like I said, I, I was always the first to adopt software and new thing. I think I was one of the first avid like clients ever, um, you know, back in the day, but I knew, you know, the value it was going to provide and just off, offloading a lot of that internal work. So let's look at, you know, one of the other factors that, you know, think about this, instead of showing up to a board meeting with your paper copies, answering questions, oh, I'm not sure, let me, I'll get back to you on that. You know, imagine having instant access right there to answer questions, to really showcase, you know, a cutting edge technology that, you know, when you're going to your proposals or you're trying to gain new business, it, it'll give you that edge. It's going to give you that, right. you know, ability to gain that client's confidence and, you know, I always say I would take the, the technology and put my, you know, spin on it. Oh, here's what I can do. You know, just change it to, to be what your company provides instead of what your software provider, uh, you know, is gives you the ability to do. You know, these are things that are, that are going to help you gain new business. And then, you know, consolidating the solutions is so beneficial. Um, you know, I hear people all the time. You know, I have to sync with all these different companies and half the time, you know, this, the data is out, uh, you know, out of order because it's been a week and this customer pays and all of a sudden they're yelling at me because the balance wasn't updated, you know, real time and anything you can do to cut out, you know, all these little issues that can go on and consolidate everything into what Terry likes to call one throat to choke. <laughs> one throat to choke, baby. That's, that's what like people like to hear. Um, Andrea, you, it's funny that you say this, you know, I think that there, I not think, but rather I know that we have customers out there today that the property manager is doing inspections for a community and they're taking out a piece of paper and a pen and they're going through a report and they're, they're writing their notes down. They're also taking a phone or a camera with them and taking pictures. Of, of, of each of these violations, because what's a violation worth if you can't prove it with a picture, right? And yeah. so they're doing this, then then they've done this, and, and now two, now we have two systems that are in place now. We have we have the, the abacus, the pen and the paper, and then we have, then we have the, the pictures. Now the property manager goes back to the office, sits in front of tops, and re-keys in this information into the system. Then they have to download those pictures, Put the pictures and figure out which house and which picture goes with which violation and so now they've done the work twice in three different systems and so when you think about that you think about that and, and you you try to change uh, a user's behavior a property manager's behavior they're going to push back this is always the way that i've done this but they're not thinking about this the way that the business owners that are on this webinar today should be thinking about this i just paid somebody to do something twice they just wasted that time to where this could have been one cohesive process that existed and was done in the field one time. And so the, the fact that the fact that we have customers even today that are that are using Tops Professional, they're still using this disparate systems. Right. And so the struggle is real when it comes to when it comes to the property management life. I mean, those those uh, those disconnected systems are really a big time waste. Yeah. And you think about, you know, you're bringing back bad memories back when I would do inspections, but you know, just the fact that a lot of times they're so overwhelming, it may take days to get that information in. And by the time you send the letter out, they probably already rectified the, the issue. So being able to, to send it real time in, by email and print all in the same day, you know, you're not gonna have that, well, why'd you send me this letter? You know, it, I, my yard's not like that, you know, I fixed it that same day and it's, uh, you know, we've all gotten like the bills after we paid a bill a week before, and then they send you the late letter. It's like, well, you know, yeah, I get I paid it a day late, but it took you a week to send me a letter about it. You know, that that causes heartburn for the 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 end user, the the homeowner, the resident, the board member, whoever it is. You know, and because in today's you know time, instant access. You know, they expect that you're just able to wave a magic wand and all this stuff's going to instantly happen and so managing your bandwidth and and cutting down on those manual processes you know it's critical and then you know let's talk about like you know what we've been talking about the through the whole presentation is this you know digital communication strategy and this is the only way that you can really scale 
and still provide that you know level of service that people are expecting. You can't hire enough people to instantly respond to every phone call, but when you're providing all the information online 24/7, you know through posts, through websites, through you know emails, through uh, you know text message blasts, so many ways that we've got now that we can you know communicate with our owners. And so creating that digital resident experience is going to set you apart. And I will keep reiterating that more staff is not the way to grow your business. Uh, you know, a lot of our, our like recent customers, one of the, that's why I put this one up here. Um, you know, the fact that they're they're talking about the volume of calls that has gone away. Uh, you know, and all the things. And like I said, there's never going to be a perfect transition. If you think there is, you've never been through one. Um, you know, we try to make it as painless as possible, but there's always going to be you know a challenge here or there. But you know having a customer success team that owns our clients for the lifetime, I think is is a game changer because, you know, they're not going to pass you on to the next person. They're going to be with you, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, helping right. you fix it, helping you get through it, you know, helping you review your data. And, and a lot of our challenges come from the fact that Tops Pro lets you do things that you probably shouldn't do and put things in fields that shouldn't go there. Um, so a lot of that, you know, we put more guardrails in Tops One to prevent people from you know doing things that are going to cause havoc in the end um, so just something to keep in mind you know these are big like things to think about especially you know with the ability to provide so many different ways to communicate uh, it, it's going to be something that's going to you know reduce time and, and energy with your current staff so you can take on more uh, you know it's going to give them a better you know quality of life because being a manager is difficult you know like any position in HOA management, it really does wear you down. Um, and piling more and more and more on with communities, it just, you know, you have to find a way to relieve some of that stress off of them. And then we're gonna wrap up like talking about, you know, this is this is a new idea for, for so many people that, you know, having a web solution you're not buying a product you're you're partnering because it's a living breathing thing that continues to evolve uh so as you're you know coming on board the fact that every you know time we do a, a new release or a publisher anything we're constantly gathering feedback and that's what our cs team does is we're the client advocate so we're listening we're trying to get you know these things pushed through do they always listen? No, but we're very loud. So, you know, we listen, we try to, to prioritize everything based on how many clients, you know, are in need. But uh, there's never a time where, you know, something that you want, if it is something that's going to benefit everyone, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we're going to drive uh, to get product and development to, you know, make it a real thing within the app. And, and we've had people who ask for things and, you know, it can get deployed pretty quickly because it's a quick change. So, those are the, that's what I mean by, you know, a living, breathing thing. So it's, I always call it forever, or what was it? Uh, I can't remember what company, but they used to have beta on their logo and they ended up having to take it off because, um, you know, they couldn't get investors because they didn't like the word beta. But in their mind, beta was great because it means that we're constantly innovating. And, and you know, I was like, that's, that's really interesting. So I would think this is great. You know, you're always in a beta because you're always continuing to grow. Um, and I know we have a lot of Tops Pro uh, people that, and I was one of them, so don't feel bad. You know, why can't I get these changes I want? And, you know, not being a, a technical person when I came in, if someone sat down and explained it to me that, you know, imagine building a, a Lego tower, you know, and think of, you know, the technology, if I build it all the way up and I need to change the red Lego down here, I have to take the whole thing apart. But the analogy was with a web solution, I can actually just take that that red Lego out and put a different color in. And that's when I realized, okay, I don't know enough about how technology works, but that makes a lot of sense to me. So, you know, it's not that, you know, we don't wanna to do things for, for our Tops Pro clients, we do. Um, you know, I was a user for 13 years. It's just that, you know, it, putting time and effort into an older technology, it, it's not worth, you know, what you're gonna get out of it. And our job is to keep innovating and to keep continually pushing ourselves to do better and better. Terry? 
that, that nailed it. Yes. Awesome. I know we had another poll we were going to throw up. Um, just talking about like, how many of you think that like, this is something that would benefit you? You know, being honest, just thinking about like, you know, is it something that you want to explore? Is it something that, you know, you think is going to be beneficial to your company? Andrea, can I just say and answer that for everybody and just say yes? <laughs> Don't say that because, you know, my onboarding team will kill us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, what's amazing is, you know, we did go through like a little bit of growing pains and, you know, going from a, a product to a SaaS company, like it, it's a whole different world. And, and we've all learned from that. But, you know, if you don't learn from your mistakes, then, you know, you're not growing. But one thing that, that I'm so proud of with all of us is that, you know, not only are our clients happier, our reviews are phenomenal, you know, we've really turned this around, but, you know, especially looking at last month, um, you know, we had a record, you know, month where I, I think that we have 92,000 uh, new doors that are coming on just from last month's sales. You know, that's phenomenal. Like the, We have the largest month that we've ever had in sales in 30 years, Andrea, just, just yeah. to throw that out there. Yeah, and it's so great that we've invested in so many like improvements to our import tools, and we listened to our clients. They were all like, "Ah, ah wait a minute, you're not gonna bring my flex data? I'm not." Mm -mm. So it's like, okay, let's work on importing flex data. Oh, I want you know all my open CCNRs and closed CCNR records, and I want all my stuff. And and we listened, and and it took a lot of resources and a lot of money to to build those out. But now it's like it's a game changer for how we onboard our clients and make it as painless as possible so that they've got, you know, that access to previous information. And, yeah. and there's no other company that, that can do that and bring over that history, uh, you know. And I have to brag that I don't think there's any other customer success team, you know, we've got a great team here with a lot of credentialed um, PCAMs, we've got CMCAs, AMSs, I've got, you know, accounting experts that have been in the field working for companies for 10, 12 years. So I love the collective intelligence that we have to help our clients whether it's to solve a problem, whether it's to, you know, give advice, whether it's to help, you know, get through a transition. Um, you know, I, I always brag that even one of our team members drove like 20 miles and, and went and helped someone resort some things that, that they had uh, a printing issue with, and she drove down there. That's how much, you know, level of care and service and, and real dedication to the clients that, that she took the time that she didn't have to and went and helped the client that had a challenge. And I'm yeah. so proud. I, I have, Andrea, the same thing. I haven't been more proud of in 11 years that I've been here of where we are as a company and where the application is. Yeah. Um, the application and our services team have never been better. Um, you know, like you said, when we first launched the app, I think five or six years ago, it was rough. I mean, it was rocky. It was a new application. Um, you know, there were some, there were definitely some, some unhappiness out there. And so living in that time and then fast forwarding to now, to where we've made such incredible improvements and in seeing people grow and seeing the happiness from our clients and seeing people uh, reach out to tell us how happy they are, it's really, really exciting and it makes you proud. When you think about this as business owners today, when you get a compliment from one of your homeowners or one of your board members that somebody's done something uh, to, to warrant that, that good feedback, imagine how proud you are. That's how we feel about our application. And we feel that way. We know that it's the right decision for, for everybody that's on this call. Uh, we have great references people that have made this jump and like Andrea said talking about the implementation and onboarding team not only are they PCAMs and, and, and AMS and CMCAs that are that are on that team but they're also people that also had history with using Tops Professional mm -hmm. so exactly where you were today or where you are today they have that same experience and so they were masters of that legacy older application and now that they use Tops One they've had experience migrating people from point A to the to point B, which is tops one. So they're masters of both worlds. It's a very, very natural transition when you can do that with people that are very familiar with your world as well as your software. Yeah. And keep in mind, Terry, I find it, you know, we talk about the challenges that we had years um, back, but uh, I do a lot of books on tape. And one of the things I've been listening to is like all these other large companies that I had no idea, you know, even Salesforce went through a massive change when they went to a web based system and their you know the client loss and the unhappiness and all the things but they they learned from that mistake they you know and they evolved is what it is i mean any change that you make whether opening a business whether you know changing the way you're doing technology but no one knows kind of how it's going to 
affect the way you're currently doing business when you have to switch to a whole different mindset. And and, and it was a learning curve. And you know, we all like probably got a few gray hairs over it. But over on this side, kind of like the six months from now, you know, I always no. say I'm gonna be glad I did this because you know, getting on that other side is phenomenal. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and um, we will talk to you all soon. So I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day. Appreciate y'all. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.